There comes a time in every woodworker's life when he needs to make a round hole. And what better way to do it than with a little sweat power. Um, good old brace and bit. Jennings pattern augered bit can pretty much tackle any hole size. Uh, any hole size based upon the strength in your arm and the swing of your brace. Got a 10 inch brace here and a 3 quarter inch uh, Jennings pattern bit. Uh, I have turned uh, wider diameter bits in this. I think I did a one and a quarter inch bit with this once. It was a hell of a lot of work with a 10 inch swing. Uh, certainly if you're going to turn anything larger than about three quarters to one inch, you're going to need wider than a 10 inch swing. Um, I, I've seen 12 inch swings. I've heard of swings larger than that, but I haven't ever really found any. Um, eight to 10 inches is really mostly what you're going to need in your shop. Um, I just so happen to have a need to drill some three quarter inch holes and they need to be at least four inches deep because they're through my bench top. These are the extra hold fast, hold down holes in the back edge of the bench. They're not dog holes, but they're um, used for just any, any additional work holding I need along the back edge. So let's uh, hop up on the bench and let's show you how to bore a hole. So first things first, you really need to get over top of the auger bit. So on a bench top like this, the best thing to do is just hop up on top of the bench and get over top of it. You see I'll use these two squares set at 90 degree angles to one another so I can check the orientation and really be sure that I am square in two different planes. Now you want to start the lead screw in to the point where those side spurs engage. This is the critical part to keep square because like a good hand saw, once you get the bit advanced a little bit, it will help to guide the rest of the hole. So if you enter it a good way square, it will stay square the rest of the way. The long and short of it is, is really once you do enough of this, you do get a feel for it as you look down over the bit and you can just kind of get a, a sense that I'm square and I'm going straight in and you can move the squares out of the way. But in getting started and practicing, two squares is a good way to, to do it. Here's the first person view. If you look down from my perspective, right here, I'm kind of looking at an angle, and even moving this square up like that, you can get a perspective from two dimensions on whether or not you're square. It's a really, really effective way just to make sure, and really, in a bench top this thick, once you get most of the way through, the, the bit is already being guided, so I can really move these out of the way because I'm about to hit the square with the arm of the brace anyway. I want to periodically just check under the bench, see if you're poking through the bottom yet. You can usually tell, because the, the work will get suddenly quite a bit easier when that lead screw pops through, because it's not pulling the bit in anymore. I'm almost there. Yep, there's the point of the bit has come through. So I want to let up on the pressure on the, the top of this. I don't want to completely blow out the bottom. It doesn't have to be the cleanest exit hole because no one's ever going to see it on the bottom of the bench. Except I suppose when woodworkers come to visit my shop and crawl under the bench. See, it's not pulling the brace or the bit through anymore. So I do have to push a little bit down to get those spurs to cut that last little bit. There we go. Reach under here and kind of break off any of the little pieces. And Hold fast, hold, ready to go.